Welcome back. And next up is Simon from Data Cake. They make it extremely easy to handle your data and provision devices using their IoT platform. Enjoy his talk. Hello, and welcome to the Things Conference. My name is Simon. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Data Cake. And in this workshop, I'm now going to show you how you can bring the devices that you already have on your Things Industries LoRaWAN network server to Data Cake and how you can set up at once monitoring and um, alerting scenarios without the need of any single line of code. So thanks for joining, and I hope you enjoy what I'm now going to show you. So let's start. Um, let me give you a basic introduction to Datacake if you are not familiar with Datacake yet. So basically, Datacake is an IoT platform that has integration for many different IoT platforms, lower band network server, and devices. Um, creating an account on Datacake is free. Um, you can sign up without um, the need of, to provide a uh, credit card, stuff like that. It all happens through registering on our platform. I've already done this, created a special account for this workshop now, and let's log in. The first thing that you see when you created your account and log in is this um, view here, this typical view of your, we call that workspace. And it starts right away with the list of devices. Um, as we haven't yet created any device, it's of course empty. And here you find the sidebar where you've got all these different options, uh, member sections, gateway monitoring, more on that later. And it all starts by pressing the add device buttons. But before we are now going to create devices on Data Cake, um, I'm going to show you now how you set up your TTI application to forward data or to be prepared to forward the data from your devices on TTI to Data Cake. So let's move to TTI. On TTI, you see that I've already created a short demo or a small demo application directly. Um, this tutorial or workshop assumes that you already got some devices on TTI and that you're familiar with how TTI works. So basically, in your application on TTI, you head over to the integrations section. And here you find webhooks. And because we're working very closely with TTI, which we really greatly enjoy, so thanks for and to everyone at the team, um, we've got a webhook template for Data Cake ready. So once more, you go into the integrate, this is your application on TTI. You go into the integration sections on webhooks, and then you press add webhook and you open up the Data Cake integration. So there are now two things that you need to provide. The first one is pretty easy. Um, it asks us for a webhook ID. We can call that my new Data Cake webhook. And the second thing is the token, which um, authenticates the TTI integration to data. So what we now need to do is create a token um, for TTI. And this is happening on Data Cake. So let's switch back to Data Cake. On Data Cake, um, in our empty workspace, we, um, on the sidebar, navigate into the members sections. And in here, you could invite members by simply providing an email address. But what we are now going to do is we head over to API users and create a completely new API user. We call that TTI token. And Data Cake now um, allows us to choose or to define um, permissions. We don't need any workspace permissions. That what we need is permissions for the devices. So we simply press that button here that we add permissions for all devices in that current workspace. And the only permission that we want those devices on TTI to be able to do is that they can record measurements. We press save. And this now creates the token on our backend. We are um, pressing the show button, copy this token back to TTI, paste it and press on Create Data Cake Webhook. That's it. We're now all set, and we prepared our TTI integration uh, application to forward data from the devices in our application to Data Cake. Let's continue with creating our first device. And we are doing this by heading over to our Devices section. And here, um, you find the Add Device button. When we press on that button, 
it first opens up um, a list of available presets. So we have um, all the all kinds of different presets for lower band devices. And if you have a device which isn't yet in the preset section, you can ask us for adding a preset or you can create that using a generic lower device and just give us a hint here um, what device you were looking for. But for this workshop, I decided to use one of the most prominent sensors on Datacake, which is the Dragino LHT65. And I personally really like those sensors. So let's start with that. We've got um, Dragino as temp manufacturer number template section. We select the LHT65. And of course, inside the selection for the lower band network server, we um, select the things industries. And we're now required to choose a plan here. And Datacake allows you to create up to two devices for free. So we're now going to select the free plan, press next. And now we are um, asked for a name. We call that my LHT65 device. And we, are now, um, we now need to provide dev UI. So let's head back over to the things industries and go into the overview section. Um, we see that there is one device already preset. This is exactly this device here. And we're simply going to copy the dev UI back to Datacake, paste this here. And all we now need to do is press add device. So what happens now is that this device is being created on our backend. And also it creates this dashboard here, which of course you can um, edit but more on that later. And in the configuration, you also see that we've created the fields um, for all the sensor data here, which is being created automatically. Um, and you also can see that there's a lower band section over here. So because this, this is TTI and we added a token, we need to check mark this one here and press save cha uh, changes to have the authentication set up and working. Let's go back to the dashboard. And this device is currently sleeping. So I'm now going to initiate a join request to send data to TTI. So um, this takes just pressing this button here for a couple of seconds. It now begins to send a join request and it communicates with TTI. I think the join request is completed. Yes. And it automatically forwards the data from TTI. We can also have a look here on that device. It was seven seconds ago, and it's already here flowing in data. Cake. So this is all you need to do to connect the um, sensors that you have on your TTI um, instance to data cake by creating an integration, um, creating an access token, and then simply copying in, copy paste the dev UI and select a preset before. So in terms of monitoring, we're all set. Data is now flowing into data cake. Um, we successfully created an integration on TTI and added our first device. Um, this data is now stored on our um, database and you can also see and access historical data from here. But now let's move on and create our first alert to send an SMS, an email. Um, in this device view and overview, you see this tab bar here. And on this tab bar, you find the option and section for rules. So by clicking on this, this opens up a list of rules. And as we have not yet created a rule, um, this list, of course, is still empty. So we are going to create our first rule by pressing the Add Rule button here. This opens up um, a dialog which we can use to graphically define the rule. And this basically is simply like an if this, then that editor. So the first thing that we do is press on the Please Choose button. Um, the device is preset, and we also need to define a field. So we want to monitor the temperature. So we select temperature in here. And um, the next thing is the condition. So we, let's say, want to monitor a temperature for things like larger. So if this is larger than 25 degrees, then send an email to Simon with subject temperature warning. And in the editor, this also allows you to insert a placeholder for temperature in this case. But sometimes you just simply don't want to send um, out an SMS or email if the temperature just raises above 25 degrees for a few minutes or so. 
So we can also add some advanced monitoring scenarios here by simply pressing on temperature once more. There you see the time range. This is set to current value. That means that it does the monitoring on the current value, which is coming from the sensor. So one value at a time. When we press on time range, we have the option now to define an average value, a sum, which is for counters, but also a minimum or maximum. So by choosing minimum, we can say that um, we define a time range here, one hour ago up until now, we see a preview of that time range. So that means that the minimum of that value for at least one hour needs to be larger than 25. So this means in that case that we evaluating and monitor the temperature. And if it is larger than 25 for at least one hour, so somebody has, um, yeah, or the motor is, is, is not working and it's overheating, um, this is the case and it will trigger the action to send an email. You can also chain multiple actions. So like sending emails, sending SMS, providing SMS, cell phone numbers, but also call webhooks. And webhooks allow you to um, control third-party services. And it's also possible to trigger downlinks. So if we would have multiple devices in here, we can monitor the temperature and trigger a downlink on a device that is having a signal light attached to it. Um, we also allow retriggering. That means that every time this condition is true, it will send out an alarm email and trigger the downlink um, over and over again. And you also got the option to define a branding. So that means if you have white label solutions, so data cake running on your own domain, on your logo and so on, you could send emails and um, SMS coming from your branding. Um, let's give it a name here, which is temperature alerts and create that rule. And you see that the rule is now created. It sends an email and sends the lower band down it. Downlinks, by the way, also are in the template here and can be defined on data. Game. So this is um, how you create rules. You can also deactivate the rules or create multiple different rules for um, different alert stages and stuff like that. So this workshop is almost over. And before I say goodbye, I wanted to show you something about collaboration because um, Mostly you want to have different users access the data for your monitoring. There are two ways to do that. And the first thing is in our, the first way is in our member section. And here you find um, members in your workspace. You can invite new members by simply providing an email address, select the permissions and give permissions for your devices. In this case, it's viewing permissions, but you could also give configuration permissions. Um, the second way, which might be a little bit easier if you just want to share the device's data, is by creating a global dashboard. Um, I've already done this, and as you can see here on the sidebar, we've got the option to create new dashboards, and this one is a public one. So that means um, a link has been provided for it. When we copy that link, um, exit the edit mode, um, we can open that up on any um, browser. So you can share the link to your customers or the people you want to give access to the device. And the dashboard is opening up without the need to register on data page. So yeah, um, the workshop is over. I hope you enjoyed it. And I was able to give you an overview and a tutorial how you create and bring your devices from TDI onto data cake and do some um, advanced monitoring and alerting scenarios. If you have any questions, feel free um, to contact us. Go to our homepage, you find all the contact informations and also a live, uh, live chat widget, which you can use to speak directly to us. Registering on Data Cake is free and we support up to two free devices. So happy to see you on Data Cake. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.